What's up guys, my name is Amir Sapri from civiltutorial.com and welcome to your first civil engineering mechanics tutorial. Before we get started, I'm just going to give you a quick review of what we are going to cover at this course. The topics are statics, analysis of elementary structures, moment of inertia, hydrostatics, dynamics of particles, dynamics of rigid bodies, and vibrations. We have two main sources for this course, Vector Mechanics for Engineers by Beer and Johnson, which is our main source, and Engineering Mechanics by Hibbler. I recommend you to have at least one of these books as a reference. I may use other resources, which I'll introduce them later during the lectures. So, what is mechanics? Mechanics is a branch of physical science which describes and predicts the state of rest or motion of bodies under the action of forces. In general, mechanics is divided into three branches. Rigid bodies, deformable bodies, and fluids. The mechanics of rigid bodies is divided into statics, and dynamics. Statics is dealing with bodies at rest and dynamics is dealing with bodies in motion. In rigid bodies mechanics, bodies are assumed to be perfectly rigid. So everything is assumed to be perfectly rigid. In reality, structures are never absolutely rigid and deform under the loads. These deformations are usually small and do not affect the condition of equilibrium or motion of the body. However, these deformations are important as far as the resistance of the body to failure is studied in mechanics of materials. Mechanics of materials is a part of mechanics of deformable bodies. The mechanics of fluids is divided into mechanics of incompressible fluids and compressible fluids. Hydraulics is a part of mechanics of incompressible fluids, which deals with problems involving water. We have four fundamental concepts in engineering mechanics, space, time, mass, and force. Space, time, and mass are absolute concepts. independent of each other. On the other hand, the concept of force is a relative concept. Which is dependent to mass and time. In other words, a force can cause an object with mass to change its velocity. The other two important concepts are particle a rigid body. A particle a particle has a mass 
but a size that can be neglected. A rigid body is a combination of large number of particles that have fixed positions relative to each other. Newton's law of gravity plus three physical laws of Newton are foundations of classical mechanics. They describe the relationship between a body and the forces acting upon it, and its motion in response to those forces. The Newton's law of gravity states that every point mass in the universe attracts every point mass with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So the magnitude of force is equal to g m1 times m2 over r squared. m1 and m2 are masses and r is the distance in between them. And g is the gravitational constant which is a physical constant that obtained by measurements and g represents the number 6.67 times 10 to minus 11 and the unit is newton times meter over kilogram squared. Based on Newton's gravitational law, the Earth and the Sun are attracting each other with the force F, which can be easily calculated by this formula. We have G, which is a physical constant, M1, which is the mass of Earth, M2, which is the mass of Sun, and R, which is the center to center distance between them. Based on Newton's gravitation law, every object or person on the Earth is getting attracted by the Earth. This attraction is known as the weight of that object or person. So if we consider the attraction of the Earth on a particle located on its surface as a particular case of gravitation, we can extract weight formula from the gravitation formula. In this case, the attraction force or weight is equal to g or gravitation constant multiplied by capital M which is the mass of the earth mul multiplied by small m or the mass of the person or any object on the earth divided by r squared which r is the radius of the earth in that in that location. Gm over r squared is a relatively constant amount which is known as the gravity of Earth. Denoted by small g. Gravity of Earth refers to the acceleration that the Earth imparts to objects near its surface. It has approximate value of 
meter per second squared which means that the speed of an object falling freely near the Earth's surface will increase by about 9.81 meters per second every second. Let's explain three physical laws of Newton. Newton's first law of motion, or law of inertia, says that an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So, what is an unbalanced force? Let's imagine a ball on the ground. Okay. There are two forces acting on the ball. The gravity force which pulled on the ball and the normal force that pushed the ball upward. Since these two forces are of equal magnitude and in opposite directions, they balance each other and the ball is said to be at equilibrium. There is no unbalanced force acting upon the ball and thus the ball maintains its state of motion. When all the forces acting upon an object balance each other, the object will be at equilibrium. It will not accelerate. So let's summarize everything. Okay, when the forces are balanced, the acceleration will be zero. Two conditions arise here. The object is at rest, the speed is zero, and the object is in motion. The speed is not zero. If the object is at rest, the speed is zero, it will stay at rest. And if the object is in motion, it will stay in motion with the same speed and in the same direction. Newton's second law of motion explains the behavior of object when the existing forces are not balanced. It states that the acceleration of object as produced by an unbalanced force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the force in the same direction as the force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object or in a simple word, A is equal to F over M. When we have unbalanced force, we will have acceleration. 
This acceleration is proportional to the amount of unbalanced force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. We can write this formula in the more conventional form of F is equal to M multiplied by A. The third law of motion says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. To understand the law, you can consider yourself shooting a ball. When you shoot the ball, your foot exerts a force to the ball and the ball exerts an equal and opposite force on your foot. So this is the force that your foot exerts to the ball and this is the equal and opposite reaction of the ball on your foot. Thank you guys for watching. In this video, we have covered basic and fundamental concepts in engineering mechanics, and we have reviewed Newton's law of gravity and three physical laws of Newton. In the next lecture, we will review the system of units and conversion methods. If you have any question, you can just send me a message on YouTube or send me an email to info at civiltutorial.com Make sure to subscribe to this channel and visit civiltutorial.com for more videos and I'll see you guys later.